Valentine's Day. A consumer holiday that masterfully profits on individuals looking to woo their significant others as they seek love, companionship, and, well, sex, also. As couples gear up for the exciting world of parenthood, passing on their genes and winning the game of evolution, lest they, of course, opt for protection yeah, courtesy of modern sex education, because sometimes a kid truly is not worth it. But in the game of evolutionary biology, sex doesn't actually seem to make much sense. Not on the surface, at least. An organism's evolutionary success is predicted by its defined fitness, a measure of the amount of viable offspring one can yield that survive and reproduce. Asexual organisms that produce offspring in the absence of sex don't have to expend extra energy in finding and courting a mate, and their population growth is exponential. One makes two, two makes four, four makes eight, and so on and so forth. You, on the other hand, have to spend your time, energy, and resources courting a mate to get a single offspring between the both of you. Any which way you analyze it, asexual reproduction appears to be the more evolutionary fit system for passing on genetic material to the next generation. And it's not limited to single cells undergoing mitosis or fission. While never actually observed naturally in humans or other mammals, Virgin Mary births have actually been documented quite commonly in full-fledged multicellular animals ranging from insects to reptiles, even appearing sometimes as freak accidents in sharks. The phenomenon is known as parthenogenesis. And if this system can create offspring without the stress of courtship, then why bother with the energy costs of producing any men in the first place? To answer that question, we're going to take a look at some wet and wild New Zealand mud snails. The New Zealand mud snail is an interesting specimen to ecologists in that it's capable of both reproducing sexually and asexually. And in the late 1980s, while working in the Department of Zoology at the University of Canterbury, Curtis M. Lively made a peculiar observation. The frequency of male snails in a population was consistently much higher in bodies of water where populations of snail-infecting trematode parasites were high. Given that parthenogenic female snails produce identical female clones, the frequency of males present in a population is a good estimator of the level of sex occurring, and assuming that present-day trematode infection rates were representative of past selection, Lively concluded that sexual reproduction was being positively selected for in snail populations with high rates of parasitism. While asexual snails could produce high offspring numbers with identical genes, a parasite capable of infecting one of those offspring could take them all down. Sexually reproducing snails, on the other hand, expend extra energy, yielding less offspring, but each offspring they yield is a unique product of genetic recombination, giving the offspring unique genotypes and increasing the diversity of the gene pool, enhancing the odds that at least one of them might be resistant to the parasitic infection. The proposal that species expend extra energy to increase the rate at which they diversify their gene pool, all in the vein of simply maintaining its population in the presence of a co-evolving parasite, has been coined the Red Queen Hypothesis, based off Carroll's 1871 book, Through the Looking Glass, where Alice and the Red Queen run faster and faster, only to find it takes all their running energy to simply maintain their same place. To experimentally test this hypothesis, Levi Morin and colleagues in the Department of Biology at Indiana University set up their own controlled system of host parasite evolution using C. elegans, aka oh, dang, nematodes. and their pathogenic bacteria, S. marcescens. Like the New Zealand mud snails, nematodes are also capable of reproducing alone or with a buddy by doing what mature scientists refer to as outcrossing breeding outside one's own genetic lineage. In control groups, when left with no infectious bacteria, the nematodes had an outcrossing rate of about 20 to 30 percent. However, when presented with infectious, co-evolving bacteria over 30 generations, the outcrossing rates increased to over 70 percent. It's more than double the time engaged in... relations. The researchers also established a group of nematodes that were placed into new cultures of bacteria with no prior nematode exposure each generation allowing the nematodes to evolve bacterial resistance without allowing the bacteria to co-evolve with the nematodes. In this scenario, outcrossing also jumped up to 70% initially, but after the nematodes developed bacterial resistance, outcrossing fell back down to 20-30%, to indicating the continued maintenance of sex in evolution is in part due to a red queen conundrum of always trying to increase gene pool diversity in the face of ever-evolving pathogens simultaneously evolving to get an edge over us and take us down. So, as you endure ridiculously priced Valentine's dinners, or spend extra hours sculpting abs in the gym to attract your mate, 
Remember to tell them at the end of the day that you guys are in it to win it, the evolutionary race. Happy Valentine's Day. Thanks for watching. Stay inquisitive.